the R32 collet holder. I really want one for this dividing head. Uh, so, what we need is a long while back when I bought this Forgeo chuck for this uh, dividing head, I had to make a back plate for it. Uh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, oh, you can see there where our balls up, got the whole pattern wrong. <laughs> uh, Forgeo chucks really handy on the dividing head. But it is a bit of a clack to keep setting up all the time. So I thought what I would do, I would uh, copy the end of this uh, and put a female thread on the back side, the same as this, to screw straight on the front of the dividing head. So I've got, I've still got the test piece here that I made uh, a long time ago when I made this uh, back plate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a slug off this. Right, just over two and a half inches long. I don't know what it is, all I can tell you is it's hard. <laughs> It'll be uh, nothing less than EM24 or possibly even not tougher than that, I don't know. But it's what I've got, so that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to cut this off, I'm going to put it in the forge or on the lathe. All I'm going to do is clean the outside up, I'm not going to really machine it to a particular diameter yet, because what we're going to do is bore the inside out uh, thread it, which is it's six TPI. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's, it's eight threads per inch. This is. I think it's a UNC or whatever, but it's not actually listed on the Zeus charts or whatever. But I have uh, I have had a little bit of a chicken sketch there. So as far as I can see, the major diameter is 1.498, which matches up with this. The minor or well, the internal of this wants to be 1.343 for 8 threads per inch. I want to make the ER32 threaded portion inch and a half long. The threads won't be inch and a half long, but it's, it's from that face there. If I show you what I mean. When you look inside there, look, uh, if you can see it, inch and a half back to that stop inside. So we will want that piece on one end and then what we're going to do is bore the inside out only needs to be an inch long hence why I've got I'm going to cut this two and a half inches so we're going to bore in an inch in the end of this and cut this eight threads per inch uh, let's say bore it out to 1.343 hopefully thread it okay uh, and then once I've bored this inside and threaded it and this test one fits ok, I'm going to take it out of the lathe and I'm going to put that in the lathe with that piece screwed onto it that's why I'm only going to machine just as much as I can on the top I don't want to machine it to a particular diameter I just want to machine it so it's true with this now when I've got it threaded in case there's any movement whatsoever I'll take another light skim on the outside and across the front and then we'll screw this in uh, and then we can take it out, spin it round put this part in the forge yaw and indicate this bit to run true and then we should be okay then to machine the other end we've obviously got a cut an ER32 taper in there uh, there's a register to go on the inside of this chuck looks a bit dark on my screen, I hope it doesn't come out like that on the video uh, so that's what we're going to do so we'll get that bit in the bandsaw and we'll get it, we'll haze that off and then uh, we'll go from there So we'll give that a whirl, shall we? We're on a mark. I expect this to be uh, <laughs> quite a while. Zoom in so you can see what I mean. The, uh, the bandsaw blade is, uh, let's just say, fast and best. But I don't want to, I've got a brand new one in the cupboard there, uh, but I'm tight out, so I'll, I'll make it last as long as I can till it's completely knackered, or, yeah, till it's completely knackered, and I'll put the new one on. They're uh, Starrett blades, what I get from a company called uh, Tuck Swords, and where they are now, 
15 quid a blade. So when I put the other one on, I'll order another one or maybe two. Keep a couple to one side, but they're, they're pretty good like. The blades that came with this SIP or SIP saw was absolutely shit. You couldn't cut anything straight with it whatsoever. No matter how much adjusting I did with the rollers and the guys and all the rest of it, you just wouldn't have it. I bought, uh, after doing a little bit of research, somebody said to me, put a decent blade on it, I'll get a Starrett one and then see how you go. So I ordered these. I spent a bit of time lining things up and I just kept putting slivers off for uh, maybe about an inch bar and it now cuts top to bottom within five down sometimes less depending on how warm the blade is I could have got it better than that to be honest but for a little bandsaw like this in your workshop cut out like that within five down it's pretty good and uh, a lot of it's down to the quality of the blade so. Yeah, we'll get that, we'll let that run, get it cut off, and then uh, we'll get it in the pause yard, indicate it in on the lathe, and then we'll go from there. Just clean the outside for a little bit.
so bald still. Just been to get this drill a bit of a lick on the grinder. We'll see if we've done any good, won't we? <coughs> been asked before, do you sharpen your own drills? What's the best way to do it? Best way to sharpen your drills is buy a drill sharp, which I haven't got. <laughs> thicker on one side than the other. I could mess about with it and get it better than that. It'll be alright. There's not a lot of pressure on it so it's, uh, it's going in okay. Some oil on big clearing chips and should be all right. on this go up to 8 uh, mm. The ER32 collets I've got go up to 20 mil. I'm not sure whether you can get slightly bigger ones. 
So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to drill that out to around about the 18mm mark, whatever, all the way through. And then when I've bored, I've got to bore this in, depth wise we've got to go in an inch, and then bore it out uh, diameter wise to, I think it was 1.343. So if I, only, if I go all the way through, no bigger than 18mm, when I've got this flip round in the jaws, sorry, in the, in the chuck, uh, I've still got meat to play with on the other side, don't I, if you see what I mean, because I've got to bore the other side, so I should be able to bore it concentric with this. So. Anyway, see what I can do if I find another drill. is uh, just over 16 mil this drill. It's a good friend of mine gave me that a long time ago. I'll just slow things down a little bit. We're running about 140 revs. And we'll see what that was like.
I think what we'll do now is we'll get, uh, get a boring bar set up and then we'll move on to the next bit. Right, shorten the length of the boring bar down a bit and just touch it on the front of that face. Set the carriage dial. We need to go in an inch. Inch on the dial. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use this boring bar, it's a Chinese one, you, you buy them in a set. Uh, it, uh, yeah, they're okay for roughing out and stuff like that, uh, but I can't, with mine, I can't get a good finish on them. So what I use, I'm a, this is just a piece of silver steel, Oop, come down a bit so you can see, uh, with a carbide broken end of a milling cutter, silver soldered in and then ground upon the end. I tend to use them for finishing a lot of the time because you don't get any tool pressure on them, well very little. Uh, they just seem to get a nicer finish so so we'll bore this down, uh, what did I say it was going to be? Inch deep, 1 inch 34, no sorry 1 inch 343, in fact we'll write that down on here so I don't forget. One inch, three, four, three. Uh, and then we've got a machine to register in the front. We've got sort of speed in there. Come on, we'll touch it up on the inside of the ball. Just zero the collar. And just a steady 10 pounds, see what she does. Talking of the Chinese stuff, I was there. Uh, we were watching Double Boost the other week on uh, it was reviewing a, a Banggood face cutter. And I'll be honest, I feel a bit sorry for the guy sometimes because I don't know what he's supposed to do. He said that uh, it wasn't He said it wasn't a comparison, it was a review. I mean I've got one here. Uh, and I've got to be honest with you, for what the cost, 30 quid that, brilliant. And I mean, that's all he was doing, he was reviewing it. And then I, I looked in some of the comments afterwards and I just thought to myself, well, I don't know why you bother sometimes, John. But it is just a few people, isn't it? You know, they, uh, I don't know whether they're anti-Chinese or what. If it wasn't for companies like Van Good and that, that uh, make these real cheap, or should I say, a lot cheaper stuff than, say, Sandvik and all the rest. And I know Sandvik and all the other top names are all better. But the bottom line is we can't afford that. It's a hobby, this, at the end of the day. So, you know, I've bought quite a lot of stuff from China over the last few years. A lot of plasma cutter, 140 quid. Put quarter inch plate all day long with it. You know. Is a miller a lot better? Of course it is. I mean, so, well, I can't afford the money that they cost. So, all this Chinese banging all the time, it uh, gives me head in a bit, to be honest. I just think sometimes without them, we won't be able to do a lot of what we do. Well, we'd still do it, but it would be a bloody struggle because we'd be thinking of other ways of doing it, wouldn't we? Look at the finishing now, that's not brilliant, is it? Look at that tool. I can't remember what it cost. 
I think you can buy the, the individual tool like that for about six or seven quid. Ship from China with an insert in a plastic box and a torque uh, driver to <laughs> change the tip. I don't know how you can do much better than that for the money. And they are what they are, that's just what you've got to remember. Anyway, that's my rant over. I'm sure Double Boost didn't take any notice anyway. Getting there. Got about another 50,000 to take out and then uh, we'll put the small at the other boring bar in. I just realised that what I said about it doesn't leave a good finish. It actually is. But it's not one of the Chinese tips, it's from a company called WNT, what a friend of mine gave me. Uh, a bit better quality tip. And uh, WNT, they do make some really good stuff. I will take, uh, we'll get this close and then we'll swap boring bars. Three eighteen and a half. Right. Three eighteen minus three four three. That's not right. What are you doing? Three eighteen. Three four three minus three eighteen equals twenty five ten. Divide that by two. We want twelve and a half thousand out of it, so I think we'll just give it a, a light pass and then have another check. Uh, what I've done, I changed the gears because this is eight threads per inch, and the problem with that is that on this set of gears, the lowest feed rate I can get is five thousand per rev. So I think it might be a little bit too coarse. So I'll take five flour out of it. I've already touched that off. Set it, reset the carriage uh, bar. And we'll take another measurement. I'll try and do what Avon does. I'll, whatever we've got left, I'll split it in half and see if that works. <laughs> Something's not right there. I wish I didn't set the carriage down well, did I? Take another skin from here. Luckily, no damage. Don't know what I did there, though.
smooth finish. That's 328. 343 minus 328. This is 15 because I don't buy two. So I want 7,500. I've got the cab on. 343 minus 328. Yeah, I got it. So we'll do this in two very small passes. Levers about 3,000 come out after this pass. Like I say if I had a slower feed rate, I'd get an even better finish. I'm not changing the gears, I am just the ball this because it's going to be threaded anyway. Tell me and my chromaters are not the best of friends. I'd love to meet the bloke who decided to put these in 25 thou increments because I think I'd just kick him in the balls. I don't know why I didn't make them in 50s. So, 325, 330, 1, 2, 3, 333. Still saying we want about five thou out of it. I'll just double check with the very nears. Yeah, three thirty three. Putting it in half didn't quite work. So I thought I'd need about four pounds on the new five. But you've got to account only for the tool pressure. Good finish, sir. Eh? What I'm doing, I just screw it till it stops. Look at the number, just slightly over 15. Do it again, slightly over 15. Slightly over 15. So we've got 
40 and a half. We're about a thou and a half on there. We'll do a spring pass at the same setting. And there we go. This puts us on the money. Um, we're half a thousand. I can live with that. What I'll do, I'll run another spring pass in and then just clean that back face up. And then I think that should about do it for that. And we'll do the register. Well, that's taking me half a thou out, but we're missing. I don't know why I'm worrying about half a thou there. <laughs> Stop on zero on the carriage dial and just wind back in and just to clean that face up. Three, four, three on the money. Right. Uh, just have to work out what this register is and then uh, we'll do that next.